Does it say we're live? Yes. Okay. All right. <coughs> Refresh here, and we'll let people know that we've started. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Yep. Okay, we have... I'm sharing it. Oh, thank you. <coughs> I'm going to share it too. No, I can't. Hmm. How do I share it? I went to my page, so I don't know if you need it on your phone. Well, welcome the people while I do that, please. Welcome, everybody. We're... Back. It's Monday night. We're back for another conversation. Yes. We are a bit worn out. It was a busy weekend, so we're not super talkative. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> by not naturally super talkative, but we will be choosing to be very talkative. And we had a busy weekend, which is nice because I feel like that's kind of a sign of spring and the weather warming up is the um, activities the weekend start to fill up. Yes. But, yes, they um, do. That always, yes. that always requires kind of an adjustment to um, then Monday, Tuesday, you feel a little more worn out. Well, just getting acclimated. Anyway. And it's... Um, starting to warm up here and the snow is melting and that's really exciting. So even if we are feeling a little, a little lax as far as energy, it's enthusiastic. It's in, there's some enthusiasm in the thawing of the snow because that means that spring is coming. So I'm happy about that. And all right. Hey, I did it. We're learning. It's we're we're learning and we're growing. I have coffee tonight, but it's not it's not regular strength coffee. It's decaf coffee. Decaf. Yeah, I needed something warm, even yeah. though I'm not cold. I just felt like a, a warm drink uh, would would work well. I um. I like to have my tea. It gives me something to hold on to. I guess it kind of gives you something to do. Hmm. I like to talk. You don't do with your hands. Oh, okay. What's been going on this past week? You said that we were busy. Um, um, or things are turning busy. This past week, I think it was kind of a normal week. Can't, nothing really stands out. Last well, last week at this time, we were getting over stomach bugs, so that was kind of... You and Bay, yeah. Um, we're all healed. Didn't, didn't pass to anyone else, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. that, was all, um, that was all over and done with very quickly. Yeah. Um... And then, yeah, thankfully, we were geared up for our um, weekend, which was eventful. You had a competition. Yes, I had a CrossFit competition. So in Moorhead, there is, which Moorhead is a sister city with Fargo. They call it Fargo-Moorhead. It's it's not, I, I wouldn't call it metropolitan, but you know how larger cities, uh, they just share a border. And so you call, like, St. Louis, St. Paul, um, in Kansas City, you have that mm -hmm. where it kind of crosses two state lines. It's a similar mm -hmm. idea. So Fargo Moorhead, it was in Moorhead, and it was at CrossFit EHP. They did an amazing job holding that event, and my partner JC and I, uh, we went in. We did the intermediate. Um, so in CrossFit, there is RX, which is uh, usually the most difficult, unless there's an elite division. RX is the most difficult. Intermediate is uh, challenging, but uh, you don't have to be like superhuman to kind of do, and then they're scaled, which pretty much anyone can do. Even if you've just kind of begun CrossFit, there's going to be something for you to be able to do. So JC and I were in the intermediate division, and we took second place. Yay! Yeah, for a while there, we were at the top Second two. place out of more, well more than, I don't think it made it, than two teams. Yes, that's good. That's a good point, too, because you could say, Much well, Doug, how many teams are there? Much more than two teams. Is there were 11, I believe, 11 teams? Yeah. Um... And so that really was, 
just for me kind of solidified the knowledge that um, I'm, I'm kind of where I think I am, where I'm not, yeah. you know, I can't go and compete on a national stage or anything, uh, but I can, I can compete. And I wanted to see if I could compete. And mm-hmm. I have an, had an amazing partner. Um, she actually just texted me to see if I want to do it again next year. And I said, yes, I would do any competition with her because she's uh, an amazing athlete. And it was just a lot of fun to do. And the kids had fun, and they came, and they got to watch. And there were a lot of people from yeah. our box, which is what CrossFitters call a gym. We call it a box. Uh, but just a lot of people there, and just a supportive atmosphere. And you spend all day there, but you don't yeah, – I don't. it's not really boring. Things move along, and, and mm-hmm. you enjoy. And the interesting thing about CrossFit is that the people who came to visit, who do CrossFit, you generally don't sit and watch it and think – uh, it's not really a, it's a tough spectator sport because you kind of want to do the workouts. So most people we talk about they're like, oh, I wish I would have signed up or oh, I wanted to do that one. Uh, it's an interesting sport in that you generally have people who want to do it instead of just watch it. Yeah. But I could talk about that for hours and and hours and hours. We also had something else happen because oh, we have some people who I I didn't recognize. Uh, Chase Lee he he had joined and yeah. good evening and Rachel. Rachel. And Christy Barnett. Oh, Christy, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I hope everything's going well. That's wonderful. Thanks for checking us out. And Rachel's engaged. Oh, congratulations. So, it's hopefully she'll learn something from listening tonight. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that yeah, that's the hope. That's probably why she's tuning in. So, we'll we'll see. If a number drops off, she might be like, eh, I don't know. Oh, Robert joined too. Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah. Something so. else happened this week. And I talked to Robert about this after class. Because uh, he attends my 515 class. Oh, our media? Yeah. So tell, tell them about it. We're not really linters. Is that a term? So, yeah, we don't observe lint generally. Okay. Observe lint is better than linters. I, mean, I don't want to offend anybody. Um, but that idea of, of sacrificing something for lint is not a mm-hmm. practice that we, we say, oh, lint's coming up. We're going to do something. It's not regular. But we're aware, especially in a Lutheran community, there's a lot of linters. I'll just, I'll just throw it out there. There's a lot of linters. So for Christmas, we got our kids a gaming system I sure hope for the it's first time. It is, right? I don't know. Maybe I just offended a whole... I don't know. Is stop, it just Catholic? Stop talking. Okay, I'll be quiet. I'll drink. For Christmas, the kids got a, a gaming system, and um, those are just so spendy. So we got one that's a couple generations ago. We got a Wii U. We got a no Wii U. No one bought them. And they're a good platform, and which, you can get them for ridiculously cheap mm-hmm, amounts. Which so. we were able to get the gaming system and multiple games for a great price. Like 90 bucks or something. Yes, um, And so it, so the, and the kids loved it. And the kids, and there's lots of, it's it's still relevant enough that the kids, the games that are, our kids are aware of their friends playing, they can play on it as well. So here it is, the end of February which this weekend was, I know that today is not, but we get to the end of February and our kids are playing hours and hours on the Wii U. And uh, we definitely reached the limit of the, well, it's new, so it's kind of okay for the hours of play to go on. And the first thing they want to do when they wake up is play. The first thing they want to do when they get home from school is play. There, Cindy's they, filling us in. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Um, yeah, so we know for sure Catholics. If we have any, if we have any Lutherans watching tonight, if you would let us know if you observe Lent too. Um, so we we I, I, we sat the kids down at dinner yesterday, yeah. and I said, guys, I think we have a problem. And they went from being really happy to have be having pizza for dinner to oh no, mom wants to talk. And so our entire dinner. I discussion didn't even bring it up. I I, I was and you was, even asked me like how I felt about it. I was like we I didn't just even have it. decided that we needed to set some boundaries on the on yeah. media. Really, we just kind of made it made it media across the board. So what we're doing is something that we've done before, but we just needed a reset of no screens allowed during the week. Um, and then Friday evening. Friday evening through Sunday evening, we can have screens, TV time, um, iPad time, um, get the gaming system out. Although, I did break the rule today, and my 9-year-old and 4-year-old, they got to be on the iPad when I took them along for my haircut. The first day. And I did not, um, I gave that a lot of thought, and... Um, I would have suggested bringing um, a toy 
Right. But that place is a little <clears throat> dangerous. Yeah, and there's, I wasn't able to, to help out because I was coaching a class. There's hanging mirrors that are seven feet by three feet. They're fragile and shouldn't be touched, and um, there's just a lot of stuff. So anyway, moving on past that, we are embarking on a new, um, new limits on or renewing limits on our screens. Just like you said, a reset because yeah. the kids, if they have the opportunity to do other things, they're not going to be missing the gaming it's just we're caught in a bad cycle of that's the easy default choice to make. So this is just a way for us to get them, um, their focus away from that, especially going into spring when stuff starts to melt. I mean, we still have snow on the ground and, and we have like water on the ground because during the day it's melting. Yep. But as soon as things start turning, kids need to be outside. That's yeah. the beauty of living in Minnesota, especially at the beginning when there's no bugs out. I mean, just enjoy. And so we really want to gear them up for that well. And their attitudes do change. I mean, those studies that talk about lack, lack of creativity and, and having yeah. um, issues with listening and making good decisions, those are true. But we've seen them firsthand, and we wanted to help our kids move past that. Well, it led to a good discussion. We've we've had limits on screens before, and as a general rule, we try not to have just unlimited screen time. But um, for any parent, you... You go through seasons and you can have a conversation even one year and then have it again the same time the next year. And your kids are old enough more. They've grown enough and matured enough that the conversation is just different. So it was nice because we had a nice discussion about discipline and how choosing hard things, even, even though they may not be hard, uh, choosing to play outside versus being on the being on the iPad or something, that's not a hard choice, but it might not be your first choice, but the, the benefits and the positive things that come out of that. So, in any case. Is it only for the kids? No. It's for all of us. We're looking at a screen right now, but that's to see comments. Right? Mm -hmm. It's to see comments. And we you posted on Facebook earlier, and so we kind of followed up on that. So, we're definitely in check. I'm trying to use my watch as much as possible for texting. Yeah. So that I don't go to my phone to reply to a text and then mindlessly check on something else. I did ask tonight during dinner time. I said, well, it was after dinner time. I said, this is apply to every rule of the house. Like if we have, uh, could we, could we somehow watch a show, um, in our bedroom and, and the kids were not okay with that. So I, that's a no go. It's, so it is going to be tough for us. But I do. I would like to read more. We'll adjust. Yeah. We always do. I need to uh, need to up the audio. Can't hear some of the conversations. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, we have our mic plugged in, and um, and I'm not sure. That's it's kind of the best setup we have right now. Right now, we'll try to speak a little bit louder. Uh, so I. I guess make sure it's plugged in all the way, but I go ahead and unplug that and plug that back in the the cord. Just the cord. That one, yep. There you go. Yeah, make sure it's nice firmly planted. Mm -hmm. That's about the best of the setup that we have. Oh, that wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't plugged in. Okay, everything's on. We're good. Cindy, a time with no bugs. Kansas doesn't have that. Absolutely, you're right. Kansas doesn't have that. Kansas also has a lot more allergies, too, which I'm thankful that we don't have. Hopefully, that helped with the audio. We kind of unplugged and replugged. That's similar in the audio world to turning it off and turning it back on. So We'll just, we'll just be a little more loud. We'll try to enunciate more. Okay, so this March, we ah. are starting with a series, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So we're starting a series of... What's it called? Choices you need to make? Yes, in <laughs> marriage. Choices you need to make in marriage. We think we're pretty witty, but sometimes we forget what we say. Yeah, I don't know if that one's so... We try to come up with some sticky statements. But we just wanted to get ourselves into a, a, you know, a m monthly conversation so that each week we build on them uh, and, and we're able to unpack them a little bit more instead of just having necessarily a one-off topic here or there. Um, but also keep them general enough that the Holy Spirit can kind of lead the conversation because as he, as he kind of puts on our heart things that we can share, 
Um, we don't want it to be too uh, specific uh, because that just uh, that does leave us room. So I know that there's some things that we want to, wanting to talk about, uh, and specifically in our marriage, we have found out that being uh, making choices, you make choices, good ones and bad ones. But it's very important for you to understand that you're making a choice. And what are what are not the five most important? I didn't put the best or the top. I, they're just five, five choices. There's other choices, plenty of choices to have. But these are five choices um, that we think that you should make in marriage. So why don't you kick us off, March second, first week of March? What is the first choice? The first choice is to be humble in your marriage. Be humble in your marriage. So. Tell us about that. Well, when we talked about choices in marriage, I think what came to mind was those choices that whether you've been married a long time, like we have, we're in year 20 now. Year 20. It'll be 21 in June. Or if you're like a lot of people that we've talked with recently who've just been married for a year or two or less or somewhere in between whatever choice that we're talking about, it applies to you regardless because you need to make that choice day in and day out. Sometimes it's easier than others. Sometimes it just is like pulling teeth to choose to be humble, choose to be some of the other things that we'll talk about. But being humble is something that I would say is um, at least daily a choice that needs to be made and if you you can either choose to be humble or you can choose to not be humble and if by choosing to not be humble it makes the road a little bit difficult so give me an example of a choice today where you had to choose to be humble um or you should have chosen to, i'm not i'm not leading you i'm just saying or you should have chosen to be humble but you made the other choice yeah well, today was a little bit of a difficult day because it was, a, number one, it was the first full day of our new screen boundaries. And it's a lot easier to let your kids just watch screen. And it was a busy day for me. And so the easiest choice for me for working through this adjustment period for the kids, because we have two homeschoolers, a first grader, a preschooler, so we kind of have some of everything. So uh, there are times that I can be gone. It can be in the middle of the morning and my older kids can be at home doing school. And so I can choose to leave them at home or they can come with. And so on this particular day, school was done mm. for the day and we had things to do. So they just came along with me. So it was an afternoon full of errands for and appointments for me, for the kids. Your haircut. And, uh, yeah, my that. haircut yeah. we talked about. And... In between the different activities, our three youngest kids, so four-year-old, six-year-old, and nine-year-old, chose to go outside and play in the puddles. Yeah. And I just, I love that. I don't, I'm not a mom who is super concerned about messes or super concerned about um, getting dirty because I think that's just that's, one of the best that's parts. Me. That is, that is a little bit more on you, but we work through it. And... I just think that's one of the best things about childhood is getting messy and playing in puddles. And uh, especially when you're coming out of winter, it's just so great to see them enjoying the spring, the signs of spring. So they were playing in the mud and the, the kids come in one at a time and they're in varying stages of messy, the most messy being the youngest. And I see her last and she has mud on her face and mud in her hair, and mud on her coat, and and her boots, and we had to turn right around and go to the eye doctor, and no big deal, I didn't really care that she looked askew, because she's four, but when we got back... Askew or feral, one of the two. <laughs> Thankfully, she doesn't behave feral, she just looks feral. Uh, we got to the, we got back from the eye doctor and I told her that she needed to take a bath and that was just a really bad decision on my part because I, we were all hungry. You weren't home. The baby hadn't slept well afternoon, so she's crying, needs to sleep, but won't sleep. And I put the two kids, two youngest kids, two middle kids in the bathtub and came back a few minutes later and it just, things imploded. Mm. Um, 
I should have, number one, I should have maybe waited until you got home. Um, but I, there were definitely ways that I could have handled, the, handled it differently, and yeah. I, I blew up. I was yelling, and I was just not handling it well, and it was not getting better. Uh, the situation wasn't. So I cleaned our cleaned the four-year-old up, got her out of the tub, but then big sister came in and finished, and I went and cooled off because I was just so frustrated. But that was definitely an area that I could have been more humble in. When it comes to them between us, um, I, I, I probably could have... I, I'm not always great at asking for help. So that's, that's an area, that's a time that I could have said, this... I'm going to need your help on this, and will you help? Um, a lot of times I'll try to, when it comes to just the logistics of the family and the household, I'll try mm. to, I just try to manage as much as I can because you have such a full schedule that just, again, I say the word logistics a lot, but just the ins and outs, it's easier for me to handle all of the kids in the household and so I find that I don't ask you for help as much as I should. So that's definitely an area where I probably need to choose humility instead of letting my emotions get the best of me and not react well. So when a lot of people think about being humble or prideful, um, I think they get a very narrow definition of, being, um, of having humility or being full of pride. How would you describe humility or being humble or being prideful or maybe selfish? I'm not sure exactly the term you want to use for it. In marriage, how would you classify it so people understand um, what is what is being humble in marriage? How can I choose to be humble? Because well, does that mean I'm not going to say anything and I'm just going to you know, do what needs needs to be because I'm going to serve? Or, or can you flesh that out a little bit? Well, I think it varies. Um, I don't have the definition off the top of my head, and that probably could have been something to prep beforehand. When I am talking about being humble, usually it means admitting that I'm wrong or admitting if I need help or... Um, there's something that kind of goes against my natural inclination. Mm -hmm. Because there are plenty of times that I don't mind asking for help, but it's usually when I have a great plan and things are going really well or I want to be able to achieve something and you step in and want to help and I don't want to accept it. It's that going against your own nature and for the better of, the team, the better of the family, the better of yourself. I think that's maybe how I would describe humility. How would you, what would you add? Sometimes I also think about, like I do, I've done, in the wintertime I like to do puzzles with the kids. And for a time we would do puzzles and I would do most of the work. Putting the pieces together and I love puzzling. And they, the kids will want to come in and help. And then they take, they love to take the last couple of pieces. And sometimes when they were younger, they used to like hide the last piece. So it'd be like, oh no, we can't find the last piece. And they'd be like, oh, here it is. And then they'd put it in. And them putting in that last piece, you know, you work hard and you want to put in the last piece. You want to see the picture take shape. And even though it doesn't matter how many pieces you put in, the picture is complete. There's still something about completing that picture uh, that become that can become the focus more than the fact that you worked on the whole project. So a lot of times I feel like that's how uh, you can you can be prideful or the humility that you started with can leave when it becomes more about what you've done or the input that you've had or the or the amount of work you feel you've put into something and maybe maybe you feel like you deserve I, we've talked about this before when we had our date night speech, which I, I haven't gotten that yet to, to post to the uh, to the website yet. But when, when I when we told that story and I used that word, which I didn't think I had used, but I did. You heard me say I deserve. That's you know an example where I feel um, 
the hum- humility is lost because I start out saying I want to help out uh, my wife. Like today, uh, I you know you needed to go into um, one of the side jobs you have. You needed to go in, and I wanted to help out. But I had a lot of things to do at work. But I wanted to help you, so of course I can do it. And then you go, and I'm not getting very much work done because I've got a call, and there's this, and just working from home, sometimes you're not the most productive. And then all of a sudden, I begin to feel like you've asked me to do too much. Um, And I make it about myself instead of the fact that the whole reason I said I wanted to help you out is because I wanted to help you out. I then turn selfish because then I'm all I'm thinking about what I'm not accomplishing. If that's my number one goal, then I need to say I can't do that because I need to accomplish this. Whereas my attitude should turn, I'm getting work done. Maybe not as much as I want, but I'm getting work done. And I'll catch up on the rest of that tomorrow. And I feel like that's where I lose sight of the humbleness I need to have in the picture of how our family works because we're a larger family and there's a lot of pieces that need to fit together and we all need to, you know, pick up a piece and put it in place. And it doesn't matter which piece, if it's an edge piece, if it's the final piece, if it's an obscure blue piece that is like light blue and you have a lot of different light blues, but you're not sure if it's sky or this, it it doesn't matter what piece it is. It's important for you to contribute and to understand where that falls in to the entire picture. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's where I feel like I, one area where I, I lose sense of that uh, humility. And the other piece of that is since I'm doing so much, uh, I begin to feel like I'm the one doing it. And I then do it in my own strength. And I realize I'm being prideful because I'm thinking all the things I can do. And that's when things come to a crashing halt instead of realizing that the Lord has given me the ability and the talent and the opportunity and the means. He's given me everything. There's nothing for me to boast about except for Christ. But yet I continually find ways to boast about myself. And that's another area that I, I, I turn in marriage, in marriage as well, because we have our marriage now, while it was horrible before, it's really great now. And I think um, I'm not, speaking out of turn that there are people who look at our marriage and say, that's what I'd like my marriage to look like. That's part of the reason why we started the ministry was because we believe that the Lord has given us some insight to be able to help and to share with others. And that can very easily turn into, uh, you know, we are humbly stepping into ministry for the Lord. But if we don't keep our eyes focused on him, then it's very prideful because it's like, look at us, look, look at our life and the choices that we make. And that's not at all what it is. Did that answer or did I just talk in circles? No, I think it answered. You think? Okay, Mm -hmm. I don't know. People can let me know if it answered or not. Okay. We're working on my conciseness. (laughs) Yes, and that wasn't so concise. So what was an example of humility practiced today for you? An example of humility practiced today for me. That's a good question. Uh, So as I think about time spent with our kids, I desire to get them into bed quickly because then I feel like I get to end my day. You know, (laughs) once they're in bed, that's when I start to relax. And the Lord really pressed on my heart. We have one son who... I don't get to spend a lot of time with I don't, with Crosby. I don't get a yeah. lot of a lot of time with him, and Grayson. Um, we need to continually help him to read. And the Lord just put on my heart, read with your boys. And so I yesterday I started um, when Crosby's going to bed. The three of us get into uh, they have bunk beds in their room. We get into Crosby's bed and we read. Uh, Together, I I let Crosby read some pages, I let Grayson read some pages, and I read some pages, and we do it together. And honestly, it is, at that time of my day, it's probably about, it's not the last thing I want to do because I love my boys, but giving that effort and that time, um, I I have to dig pretty deep for that. And I know that that's the favor of the Lord allowing me to because my personal selfish nature would just, just wants to... I know what that looks like because it has been like, all right, you go to bed, love you, see you in the morning, good night, shut the door. All right, now I can 
sit on the couch and watch something probably. <laughs> uh, and so that for me was my choice today. And hopefully it's the choice I make tomorrow as well because I want to con- I want to do this nightly with the boys um, to develop a stronger relationship with, with Crosby and to be able to, to show them um, that they matter, that they do have time. Because I do a lot. And if I don't do a lot of things with them, they're going to begin to see that they're different than other things in my life. And I don't want my kids to feel that, that they're second best. So... What is that's in... parenting, not really marriage, though, right? Well, that's okay. But the people without kids are probably like, Well, what, what, how does this, what does this have to do with me? So, for our people who are listening, and for a marriage takeaway, what we'll ask them, but we'll start by asking each other, What is yeah. an area that you would like to be more humble in, and an area that I would like to be more humble in? I think I tend to, and you've told me this before, and I've alluded to this before as well, that there are times that I just get really uptight. And you just tell me, instead of having a, not that I ask for your help to solve the situation, but if we're talking about it later on, or I'm feeling frustrated about something, and I am asking you for input, sometimes you just tell me to chill out. And I think that that's an area where maybe not that I need to chill out as much as I just need to proactively realize that I'm not great when it comes to, I can't do everything or I have, I can, I still on occasion lose my temper and don't want to be that way because we have kids of such different age. You know, it's one thing when your kids are little and you can just say, I'm, you know, mommy, shouldn't have yelled or shouldn't have whatever but when you have a 14 year old who's swooping in to help with the situation you know there's some great opportunity for some (laughs) humbling right there i need to be better about knowing my weaknesses i think i still try to like i said i try to just manage as much as i can so that you don't have to and i feel like i i feel like i only get so many passes in a day to say can i have some of your time because you have the full-time job and you have a part-time job in coaching and those are things that we've decided that that that's how our family's going to run and for things to run smoothly i handle 90 percent of the kid and household tasks and scheduling so i feel like i only have so many opportunities i should only have so many opportunities to ask for you to take some things so I think I could just be more proactive about asking for help or maybe even just talking through the day because sometimes, a lot of times, a lot of times, my expectations for myself, my expectations for the day are too high because I do have a newborn. Mm. (laughs) Right. And it's really easy to feel like I can just jump right back in because she is a great sleeper. So I um, I get full nights of sleep. And I do have help in my older kids. And so it really doesn't look, having a newborn now doesn't look like it did two and three kids ago. But the fact is still that we have a newborn and uh, I can't just power through my day. So I think that's probably an area that I need to be more humble as your wife. In maybe asking for feedback, being okay with asking for help, and also being okay in accepting your suggestions to ease up on life i think an area that i can choose is i when people ask me to do something it really feeds my need to be um, accepted and to feel that i'm doing a good job and so i say yes to just about everything and i need to work on not allowing that to feed me uh, realizing where my identity lies and my worth lies which is uh, with how what Christ has done for me being a child of God I mean that's where my identity lies that's where one of the things we say is the you know finding joy in life through our fulfillment in Christ you know continue to strive down that path of understanding that he is where my fulfillment is found but then it also it can end up putting our family in a in a crunchy position because I've said yes to a number of things that really um, doesn't allow us the freedom that we that we need um, So there's plenty of things that are worth saying yes to. It's just understanding the things that I should say no to 
and saying no to them. Because what will normally happen is that what gets sacrificed is you and me. And that's, that is so important. We don't want to get lost in our jobs. We don't want to get lost in our kids uh, in the sense that it sacrifices the relationship that you and I have together. Because you are my most favorite person. I enjoy being with you. Yeah. And so why do I want to sacrifice that? That's the easiest. Just like in parenting, it's if you can cut something out, then that's the easiest. You can you you can affect your own you can have control of your own reaction. And so if there's if, if you can't find space then yeah, it's easiest to say, Okay, well I'll just give up this. And so if we're needing white space or something in our family, yeah, we say, well, we don't need to do, we don't need that extra time before mm-hmm. bed. We don't need to have that conversation, the, that tasks or the project can just wait a little bit longer. Um, but it definitely, definitely there could be room for improvement there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a good discussion. I- in the comments below, let us know the things that you feel like uh, you can work on. Tonight's discussion was a little bit more parenting than marriage. Um, I feel like we used a lot of kid examples, so that's not uh, always well, the case. But it, yeah. it does. It's kind of our season, so it's going to come in there from time to time. And we do have a lot of examples uh, based around that. Our days involve parenting. So, And you talked a little bit about work. And yeah. so whether it's parenting for you whether it is friendships whether it's your job if you work away from the house take what fills the majority of your time and your mental capacity Mm -hmm. and start there yeah and then next week uh, so let us know down in the bottom and then next week um, we're going to talk about uh, choosing to like each other (laughs) not love each other uh, but like each other we'll talk about the differences and why that's important, uh, why that's an important choice to make. Yeah, you wouldn't think it would be, but even still, sometimes we have to choose to like each other. That's true. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye.